Greetings everyone and welcome into the PCB webinar. My name is uh, Gzim Zaneli and I am the Portfolio Marketing Manager for IT Security at PCB. Today we will discuss about the webinar topic, the difference between cybersecurity and information security. The webinar will be presented by uh, Mr. Hafiz Adnan, who is an ITGRC security consultant and lead auditor and also a PCB certified trainer with over uh, 11 years of significant and progressive uh, experience in information technology field mainly focusing on information security, IT governance, ISO standards implementation and the compliance, IT service management, risk management and uh, uh, auditing, uh, software project management and process improvement. I wish you enjoy this webinar and hope you will find relevant facts and information. If you have any question, you can write them at any time in question box right hand control panel or you can use the option to raise your hand and you will talk directly to Mr. Adnan. Please, I wish you must start with the presentation. Uh, thank you very much. Hello, everyone. My name is Hafiz Aknan, and the topic we are going to discuss today is one of the most significant um, topics that are being discussed today in the market. That is the difference between cyber security and information security. Uh, this is a brief introduction of me already. Uh, I believe Kasim have uh, introduced me. So, but in case if you want to get in touch with me later on, you can please contact me. I'll, I'll be happy to answer any of your questions, or I'll be happy to have uh, discussions with you regarding information security, cyber security, uh, risk management, IT service management, and uh, on COVID, uh frameworks. Uh, the reason I have selected this topic is that, um, as I said, this is one of the most uh, important and uh, being discussed topics today in the market today. Uh, though information security and cyber security have been, has been there for quite some time, um, and it's been there since people uh, have found the need to keep the information secure and private. There are different terms, different terminologies being used in the market, like computer security, network security, information security. IT security, cyber security, these are all the terms which are related to the protection and security of the information assets and information uh, which uh, information in your companies. So, but there are certain differences, there are very thin lines between all these terms and that is the reason I have uh, chosen this topic to see what exactly is the difference uh, between information security and cyber security. Uh, this is the agenda we'll be discussing today. Uh, we'll start with the uh, basic concepts of information security and cyber security, uh, and then we'll go into the details uh, to see the difference between cyber security and information security. Uh, we'll see how we can protect the digital assets because cyber security is more or less related to the uh, digital assets and digital information. Uh, we'll see how cyber security actually evaluate, uh, uh, evolve and we'll see the importance of the cyber security. And if we find some time, we'll see how we can ensure uh, that, that we can have the implementation of cyber security within the organization. Although we're not going to the details of the implementation of cyber security because that needs a separate, maybe a webinar or session to discuss the implementation of cyber security. But we'll see how we can initiate the process to have cyber security in our companies. The basic concepts, as you can see, um, uh, information security um, basically deals with all the kinds of information, regardless of the format. So it includes paper documents, your digital information, your intellectual property, which is in the minds of the people, verbal or visual communication. So all the kind of information, all the kind of assets which you have in your organization, you, uh, information security deals with all those kinds of information and assets. I'm sure a lot of companies today have ISO 27001 in place which talks exclusively uh, about information security. So when you go to the implementation of information security, you see there are different controls which talk about the, um, uh, which talk about the security of the information, security of the assets, security of the human resources. We have a domain. Uh, which talks specifically for human resources. Um, and then there are certain controls which talk about the physical security of your organization, like the controls you can implement in the data center um, or the restricted areas which can, you can put in the organization. So information security is a broad term which talks about the information 
regardless of the format. Cyber security, on the other hand, it talks much about the protection of a digital asset. Digital assets like all the information which you have on the network, on the hardware, the information that is being processed, stored, or transported by inter network information systems. So all the information which you have in your systems, in your in your databases, in your software, in your applications, cybersecurity talks about that information and cybersecurity talks about the protection of that information and that asset. Additionally, concepts such as nation state uh, sponsored attacks, like we see a lot of cyber security attacks and hacking being done um, uh, from state to state, from country to country, from different uh, countries, that also uh, is part of the cyber security. According to uh, National Institute of Standards and Technology, Information security uh, basically is the protection of information and information systems from unauthorized access, use, disclosure, disruption, modification, or destruction in order to provide CIA, the confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So, as I said, information uh, security covers the whole spectrum of the information. So, it covers your physical assets as well as your information assets. It covers the information which is on your papers, as well as the information which is on the books, as well as the information which is in your systems, on the hardware, software, databases, and in the applications. Cyber security uh, basically deals, uh, according to NIST, is the ability to protect or defend the use of cyberspace from cyber attacks. So it basically protects the information to be, uh, to save the information um, uh, of, of uh, the information which is available on your digital, uh, in the digital format, the information which is on your software or in your databases. So cyber security is basically a subset of information security. Information security is a big spectrum and under that you have the information which is in the form of digital assets is basically your cyber security. So anything involved security of information or information systems is your information security and the information which is in the form of cyberspace or in the form of digital information is your cyber security. So from the basic concepts we have seen the difference but as I said earlier that these terms are commonly used uh, you know, in the market. So people do get confused and they interchangeably use these terms information security and cyber security. So the difference, where does the difference lie? Cyber security only refers to the information which is in the electronic security. Information security is a product term as we, say, uh, we, we saw in the previous picture. Cyber security is about securing things that are vulnerable to ICT. So in the next few slides, I'll try to elaborate more how we can differentiate between information security and cyber security. We have seen the basic doc, uh, definitions, we have seen the basic difference, but in the next few slides, I'll try to use the diagrams to illustrate how we can differentiate between information security and cyber security. If you have any questions, uh, you can just raise your hand and you can uh, uh, write down the questions and I'll try to answer as much as I can at the end of this webinar. Okay, so the first picture which you see on your left, it contains all the information of the world. So there are two different, you can see balls. One is for representing the information security which has all the information and then the other one is cyber security which contains the information that could be vulnerable to ICT. So the left side of the picture, you can say that it contains all the information of the world. We can submit this information into digital and non-digital information. In all our companies, in our companies, we have certain information which is in the for digital format as well as there are information which is non-digital format. For example, you have applications and databases, the salaries of the people, which is in the digital format. But the records of the people, the employment, the recruitment documents, all these documents, all of they need to be secured as well. And as per ISO 27001, we have to secure those documents. They are in non-digital format or in the paper format. So information security covers your digital information as well as the information uh, which is in the 
uh, non digital format. We can say that this is the information that is secured, stored, and transferred via ICP, and information that is not transferred or stored via ICP. There's still much that is not stored digitally, as I said, such as the old books, the handwritten notes, and the information you have been given verbally. Okay. So, uh, on the information security side, you can divide the information into digital and analog. The cyber security information, as you can see, uh, you have the information which is vulnerable to ICT. And this information, even we can divide into two chunks. One, the information, the set of information that is vulnerable to ICT, like physically and digitally, and the set of information that is non-information and still vulnerable to ICT. For example, you have energy networks, you have medical appliances, you have cars, you have traffic lights. Now, these are the things which are other than information, okay, but still they could be vulnerable. You can, for example, hack the energy networks. You can uh, somehow attack on the medical appliances. You can just attack on the medical appliances through the cyber uh, attacks. Uh, you, can, uh, you, uh, you can attack on the traffic lights of any of the state or in a given particular area through the cyber attack. So there is information and there is some information which there are certain sets which are not the information but still they are covered in the cyber security. Now, these two uh, set of information basically they overlap. As you can see, there is digital information which is coming from the information security, and then there is information coming from the cyber security, and they overlap, which basically is your ICT security. Okay. And this is the last picture where you can see that the, there is a clear difference, uh, difference between the information security and the cyber security. So you have information security, which covers your analog and digital information. There is cyber security, which again covers your digital information and the information which is uh, the other set of um, uh, appliances or other, um, you can say, uh, the set of non-information things, as I mentioned, the medical appliances, your traffic lights, cars, and uh, energy networks. And in the middle, you have the digital information, which is common between information security and cyber security, and actually this is called your ICT security, which is information and communication, uh, communication technology security. So this is the main difference. The idea behind uh, is that we should be, we should have a very clear concept as IT professionals and IT security professionals, we should have a very clear concept when we talk about information security, cyber security, network security, so we should have a very clear concept that, and the difference between the two terminologies, so we should know what exactly we are going to talk, what exactly we are going to implement, and what exactly we are going to cover as part of the scope of the implementation. Are we going to have information security, and within that we are going to cover cyber security, or we are just going to focus focus on the cyber security, not the full information security part. So we have to be very clear on this. So uh, the next is the question arises as we as we saw in the previous slide that our focus is on the digital information, and the question is you now how we have to protect this digital information or the digital assets. Uh, NIST, as I said, have identified five key functions necessary for the protection of digital assets, and basically, um, um, uh, they, they basically follow uh, the same kind of model as we have for incident management methodologies in different frameworks in IT service management or information security, um, the ISMS framework. Uh, so NIST has also developed the same kind of model for the protection of digital assets. First is you have to identify the assets you are going to protect. Use organizational understanding to minimize risk to systems, assets, data, and capabilities. Protect, design the safeguards to limit the impact of potential events on critical services and infrastructure. Detect, implement activities to identify the occurrence of a cybersecurity event. Respond, 
take appropriate action after learning of a security event and recover. Plan of the resilience and business continuity uh, so that you can have a timely repair of compromised capabilities and services. So these are the five key functions or five key steps which we need to take in order to ensure the protection of digital assets. The next part is, uh, the question is how cyber security evolved because if you go back like in, before like, uh, 10 to 20 years ago, there was no major concept of cyber security um, or especially, especially in uh, the way we have today, like every day we are listening that this company has been hacked, the amount of, uh, this much amount of user accounts have been, um, um, you know, compromised. Even yesterday there was news about Yahoo that one billion accounts uh, have been compromised. So how the cyber security evolved uh, with the passage of time? As we, uh, as we saw that cyber security is part of information security and information security basically talks about the three, um, um, uh, uh, you know, the three concepts. It revolves around the three co concepts, your CIA, confidentiality, integrity, and availability. So uh, what, what is confidentiality? Confidentiality is the protection of information from unauthorized access or disclosures um, different types of information requires different levels of confidentiality and the need for confidentiality can change over time. Uh, personal, financial, medical information require a high degree of confidentiality than the minutes of meeting uh, uh, for, of, a, of a normal staff meeting. So this is all about confidentiality. Integrity uh, basically is the protection of information from unauthorized modification. For example, if a bank transfers like 10,000 US dollars to another financial institution, it is important that the amount does not change to 100,000 or 1,000 uh, US dollars during the change. So this is all about uh, integrity. Same is the concept in, uh, you know, applies to software and configurations. Uh, for example, any violation of integrity is significant because it may be the first step in a successful attack against a system of availability on confidentiality. Next one is the availability. Availability basically ensures the timely and reliable access um, uh, to the use of information and systems. Uh, this would include uh, safeguards to make sure data are not accidentally or maliciously deleted. This is particularly important with the mission critical system because any interruptions in the availability can loss can result in the loss of productivity and revenue. So information security moves around CIA, the CIA of your assets, CIA of your information, CIA of your uh, information which is in the digital format or in the, um, uh, in, in the analog format. But there's one more thing which is part of the cyber security. Whenever we talk about the cyber security, there is one more important concept which is called the non-repudiation of uh, non-repudiation. As I said, CIA are equally important, but in a digital context, non-repudiation refers to the concept that a message or other piece of information is genuine. Uh, it assures that the data integrity has been protected and that the party sending or receiving it cannot deny uh, that they didn't send the information or they didn't receive the information. It is important in transactions that require trust, such as financial transactions and legal matters. Non-repudiation is implemented through transactional laws and digital signatures. So as I said, um, uh, and uh, as we saw in the earlier slides, that your cyber security is basically part of the information security. Your information security talks about CIA. But when we talk about the cyber security, we also have to keep in mind an other important concept, an other important factor of the information which is called the non-repudiation, which as you assure that the identities of the parties in a transaction, that the information is genuine and the party receiving or sending the information, they should not deny that they didn't receive or they didn't send the information. Why cyber security is important? As we say, uh, as I said, and it, it's a very common thing. Um, um, and I was reading yesterday in one of the journals in, uh, on the internet that the third world war, or in the future, the wars will be on the cyber attacks. Not the physical wars will not happen, but the wars will be 
uh, on the cyber attacks and cyber, um, um, uh, you know, the cyber attacks will happen in the future uh, in order to compromise the information of any country or um, to play with the finances of any other country. So why cyber security is important, basically focuses on protecting the computers, your mobile devices, your networks, your applications, and data from unauthorized access. Um, it gives you a policy that emphasizes the awareness of cyber security to all the employees, including the process instructing how to handle the cyber attacks. It prevents companies from hacking, phishing, uh, denying of service attacks, etc. It ensures uh, safer data processing. It ensures safety of online transactions and personal information exchange over the internet. And most importantly, it facilitates secure and reliable co collaboration that protects the privacy of in individuals. So this is, these are some of the uh, bullet points regarding the importance of cybersecurity. There are a, a lot more uh, importance of cybersecurity and uh, as an IT security professional, we have to ensure the data that we have in our companies, the data, even the individual data that we have on our mobile phones, on our devices, on our laptops, it is secure enough um, to, uh, that it should not be uh, attacked by some un, uh, unknown person. So, uh, finally, I would like to say um, uh, we have to keep in mind uh, the key element of success is communication. Um, well, whenever we are going to have um, this framework or whenever we are going to have some cyber security policies or procedures in place, we have to ensure the communication is very important. Communication between the leadership, by senior management, and with the employees. Most importantly, first evaluate the true status of the company before engaging in any cybersecurity program. Don't just open the doors to anyone and say, come and have uh, implement the cybersecurity program. First, you as a professional and as a business uh, person, you have to understand, do you really need the cybersecurity program? If yes, what are the factors? What is the uh, domain of your business? Uh, what kind of business you are dealing with? Are you dealing a financial company? Then yes, you have to have a cyber security program. But if you are dealing as a small, medium-sized enterprise uh, in which there are no major financial transactions are involved, maybe, maybe cyber security program is, uh, is not a priority uh, uh, thing for you. So first, evaluate the status of the company, then ensure your company covers the basic principles and standards in terms of information security. Because cyber security is part of information security, and if you, your company, the people working in your company, if they don't have the mindset of the information security, try to engage them, try to give them the awareness, try to give them uh, and highlight the benefits, the advantages of information security and cyber security. So they should get familiar with the changes which you are going to have in your company through the cybersecurity program. Involve your information security team, IT team, and the business to understand and determine the scope of the program. Don't just say that I want the cybersecurity program and you have no idea what exactly uh, would be the scope of your cybersecurity program. So it's very important uh, that all employees understand the importance of cybersecurity. When you ask people, they don't even know uh, they are using modified web pages. So uh, this is just an example. You have to make sure whenever you speak to people, give them the awareness, uh, let them understand what exactly is a cyber secure, what are the different ways in which their information could be compromised, whether it's a digital inform uh, their individual information or the information which is related to the organization. Uh, there are different programs which are offered by PECB. Um, um, there are like ISO 27032, Need Cyber Security Manager, it's a five-day course. Then there's a Need Pen Test Professional, again, it's a five-day course, ISO 27034, Application Security Need Implementer, ISO 27034, Application Security Need Auditor, again, it's a five-day course. So there are different courses which are offered by PECB as an individual. So far, um, there is one ISO standard 27032, which talks about cybersecurity, but unlike ISO 27001, which you can implement across the organization, uh, as such, there is no 
management information system for cyber security available by ISO. You can follow the guidelines of ISO 27032 to align your uh, cyber security activities with ISO 27032, but at, at the organization level, you cannot go for the certification and accreditation. As an individual, you have different courses available which are offered by PCB and you can enroll in any of them uh, for your future um, uh, career growth and to have more understanding about uh, need uh, about cyber security and need implementer uh, courses. Thank you very much and if you have any questions, uh, I would like to answer them as much as I can. Thank you. Thank you, Avis, for your presentation. You also introduced our training and uh, certification that we provide. Uh, I will just add a few more words. A PCB certificate will demonstrate uh, your dedication in implementing and managing this process and the frameworks, and uh, most importantly, you will be recognized worldwide. Uh, for more information, visit our website, pcb.com, on the training section. Uh, now we'll go ahead with uh, some of the questions that have arrived. The first one is, uh, how can an organization ensure that the implementation of cybersecurity guidelines is aligning with uh, ISMS? Uh, see, I just mentioned that for information security, we have the ISMS, which is basically ISO 27001. Uh, there is one um, um, uh, standard which is provided by ISO, which is 27032. Uh, from the certification and accreditation perspective, um, there is no uh, as such inform uh, management information system available. But uh, what you can do is you can um, you can have the ISO 27000. Uh, 27032 manual review, you can just go to the guidelines and you can see how you can align your cyber security activities uh, with the ISO 27032 activities. Now, coming to ISO 27001 uh, and 27032, basically as I said, a lot of activities will be common. There are a lot of activities, there are a lot of controls which are common between ISO 27001 and 27032. Uh, there are differences, obviously, because 27001 talks more, uh, also talks about the physical security and the security which is not digital. 27032 is specifically for the digital information and the protection of digital information, but there are certain similarities. So, if you have information security uh, uh, ISMS in your organization, you can definitely uh, go through the align and you can uh, ensure uh, uh, that the, the controls which you have in your organization as part of ISO 27001, how you can further improve uh, for the digital assets and you can align with 27032. But as of now and as per my information, uh, as of today, there are no accreditation available on the organization uh, level for ISO 27032. Okay, the second question is, uh, what framework do you suggest to use on the ISMS implementation? See, the most commonly is uh, ISO 27001, which is information security. This is worldwide available uh, and it is um, uh, published by um, ISO. Uh, so most of the companies are aligning with uh, ISO 27001, the 2013 version. Uh, but even uh, when it comes to um, the cyber security, as I said, you can make sure the alignment of the controls with ISO 27032. Within information security, again, when you talk about the risk assessment, you have a framework called ISO 31000, which is only for the risk management. So, uh, your ISMS as a whole could be a combination of different uh, standards, but at the end of the day, when you go for certification and accreditation at the organization level, you will be getting only for ISO 27001, which is the information security management system. So, I would suggest uh, primarily use ISO 27001. When it comes to risk management, you can use bits and pieces of ISO 31000, which is risk management. When it comes to cyber security, you can uh, align your controls of, uh, with ISO 27032, but at the end, you will be getting the ISO 27001 certificate. Okay, uh, thank you, Hafiz, once again for sharing this highly informative presentation, and I uh, also want to thank all the attendees for joining us live today. Uh, for your information, we will start the new webinar series on January 2017, and we will take care to inform you for all the uh, upcomings. You can follow us through our website on pcb.com and also through our social networks. Until next webinar, we wish you have a nice time. Thank you. Thank you very much.
थैंक यू